there is probably no one who does not know about secondary batteries. Your interest may be electric vehicles, related stocks, or even technological curiosity. Especially these days, when the global warming issue has been highlighted, huge investments are being made here and there with great expectations along with hydrogen energy. If you look at the structure and operating principle of a secondary battery, it is true that it is difficult to understand at first glance even those from science and engineering fields. So, what would it be like to be a liberal arts graduate? In the future, I plan to cover everything from secondary batteries to hydrogen fuel cells, and I will try to fully understand secondary batteries with basic common sense that you encounter in everyday life. You may have experienced carrying a hot pack or two in your pocket when it is very cold in winter. Hot packs can be made in a variety of ways, but probably the cheapest way is to use iron powder. If you cut the hot pack and look at the contents, you can see that most of it is black and fine iron powder. When you open the hot pack, the iron powder starts reacting with the oxygen in the air. When iron reacts with oxygen and oxidizes, heat is produced. Iron has a strong tendency to donate electrons rather than a neutral atomic state, and oxygen has a strong tendency to accept electrons. As a result, the iron atom becomes positively charged and the oxygen atom that receives electrons becomes negatively charged. At this time, iron in a high energy state forms a bond with oxygen and is converted to a low energy state, so the energy difference is generated as heat. For similar reasons, when lithium metal comes into contact with oxygen, its surface is oxidized very quickly by combining with oxygen, forming an oxide called lithium oxide and generating heat. The difference is that the heat generated is greater than in the case of iron. This is because the difference between the high energy state and the low energy state is relatively large. There is a very important concept here. What does it mean that iron has a higher energy state than iron oxide or lithium has a higher energy state than lithium oxide? Understanding exactly what this means is the most important point in understanding secondary batteries. The most important thing we need to pay attention to is the outermost electron that lithium has. A lithium atom has atomic number 3 and has 3 electrons, two of which are tightly bound to the nucleus, and the other electron is the outermost electron. However, lithium, like other metal atoms such as sodium and potassium belonging to group 1 of the periodic table, has a very strong tendency to remove the outermost electron. However, when the outermost electron is removed from lithium, lithium has a charge of plus 1 and is no longer in a neutral state, resulting in poor stability. But things that happen in nature are very mysterious. This problem is solved by using oxygen. Oxygen has the tendency of accepting electrons. As a result, the lithium atom becomes positively charged, giving electrons to the oxygen atom. And the oxygen atom that received electrons from lithium becomes negatively charged. And when the positively charged lithium ion and the negatively charged oxygen atom are directly attached, the positive and negative charges can stabilize each other as a whole. Looking more closely, oxygen has six outermost electrons and accepts one more electron from another lithium atom to satisfy the octet rule that prefers eight outermost electrons. As a result, electrons are exchanged with each other in a ratio of two atoms of lithium to one atom of oxygen. As a result, lithium oxide is formed. Let's express the things described above with a simple animation. As each of the two lithium atoms transfers one outermost electron to one oxygen atom, lithium is changed to plus one valence and oxygen to minus two valence to form Li2O, and an overall neutral environment is formed. By handing over the very unstable outermost electrons of lithium, that is, the outermost electrons in a very high energy state to oxygen atoms, the electrons of lithium with high energy exist stably inside the newly formed lithium oxide. If the concept of high energy electrons is not clear to you, consider a waterfall to understand it better. Just as water in a high position has a high potential energy, and when it falls to a low position, it is converted into a low potential energy. And as the water falls, the potential energy is transformed into the sound of a roaring waterfall, and is converted into heat by maximizing water-to-water -water friction. That's why giant waterfalls don't freeze well. 
And an electron with high energy can be thought of as the same concept as a water molecule located in a high waterfall. This time, when water falls from the top of the waterfall, by installing a turbine at the bottom of the waterfall, the potential energy of the water can be converted into the kinetic energy of the turbine, and electricity can be produced by turning the generator with it. The same goes for high-energy electrons. When converting from high energy to low energy, depending on the device, work is done rather than simply being converted into heat. Let's assume that when lithium's high energy electrons flow into oxygen, they flow through an electric wire between lithium and oxygen. Now let's install an LED in the middle of the wire that will light up even with a very small current. And the moment you turn on the switch on the electric wire, electrons flow from lithium to oxygen, and in the process you can turn on the LED. It's like falling water turning a turbine. Isn't that a scene you've seen a lot? If you put a battery in that position instead of lithium and oxygen, it has a very similar effect. The negative electrode of the charged battery is filled with lithium, and during discharge, the electrons emitted from the outermost electrons of the lithium move to the positive electrode along the wire, and in the process, the electrons with high energy play a role in lighting the LED. Therefore, in the reaction between lithium and oxygen, oxygen acts like the anode of a battery. The similarity becomes even more apparent when the battery is disassembled. The negative electrode that emits electrons is made of lithium intercalated in graphite, and the positive electrode that accepts electrons is made of several metal oxides instead of oxygen. Inside the battery, a separator is placed between the cathode and anode to prevent the cathode and anode from accidentally meeting and releasing electrons. Next time, we will look into why these materials need to be converted in order to manufacture secondary battery having higher energy density. The most important message today is that if there is a material with a relatively lack of electrons that can accept it and use the outermost electrons of metals belonging to group 1 or 2 in the periodic table, it is true that you can use that property to make a battery. The same principle applies to hydrogen fuel cells, which will be covered later. Even though it is not a metal, it is possible to make energy storage devices using the high energy of the outermost electron of hydrogen, which belongs to group 1 of the periodic table. That's it for today. Goodbye.